Welcome back YouTube. Today I'm checking in to give you an update on how the past five weeks of dieting has been going for me. I'll be showing you comparison photos of my results so far. I'll give you a rundown on any changes I've made to my fat loss plan and I'll also give you a few useful pointers along the way that I hope you'll find useful to guide you into your own fat loss phases in the future. I'm currently contemplating whether or not to do a refeed or diet break soon, and I'll share with you some of my notes around what goes into making a decision around that as well. So this is the second video in this series. I'm going to leave a button up here that will let you go watch the first video if you want to, which was the start of my cut which is where I laid out all of my training, my supplementation, my nutrition and cardio, as well as a whole bunch of extra thoughts around why I do the things that I do. So you can check that out to fill in any gaps you may have with what's currently going on. I'll also be dropping timestamps into a pinned comment below and making the progress bar down here populate with all the key moments so you can jump forwards or backwards or wherever you want in this video to review sections again. Finally, if you do have any questions or want any clarification on anything I mentioned in this video, feel free to drop a comment below. While you're at it, please do go ahead and give this video a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. Tiny gestures like that on your end do make a humongous impact on the growth of this channel and my ability to keep making free content for you guys. All right, so now that all the housekeeping's out of the way, let's get stuck straight into it. So if you weren't aware, I started a fat loss phase recently to coincide with my training partner, Sherelle, and her contest preparation. Since then, her competition has actually been canceled with all of the uncertainty in the world right now with COVID-19, all the different restrictions. But because I made a promise not just to her, but to you guys as well, I've got to suck it up and keep pushing through to see where things go. I'm also really enjoying it right now, and it's a good time to be doing it from a lifestyle perspective for me. Currently, where I'm at in the world, all shops, restaurants, and any other social activities are completely restricted, so there aren't really any distractions. I'm also in a good place with my work and my overall stress load to be able to go through a long-term dieting phase, so it'd be a shame to call it quits right now. So my first change five weeks ago was to slash my calories. I was eating around 3,000-ish calories, taking in about 135 grams of protein, about 410 grams of carbohydrates, and 70 grams of fat. This was a really rough guesstimation, which is probably extremely conservative. I was probably eating a lot more than this, as I was having a lot of untracked free meals and snack sedents just about every single day. But in any case, I reduced this down to a consistent 300 grams of carbohydrates and 60 grams of fat for a total net reduction of 500 calories. This is about a 15 to 20% cut in calories if I was being accurate in my initial guesstimations. Now, I haven't been doing any structured cardio and my only staple supplements I have every day are creatine and a multivitamin. I'm still following the same four day half body split and progressing really well with that. So let's take a look at the results of all of this so far. As you can see, I've gotten considerably leaner. I am standing a little bit differently with my legs on the front shot, so my quads do look like they've grown considerably, which I assure you, they have not. While I do think I've added a small amount of muscle in the past five weeks, it's nothing compared to how it may look like in this photo due to the small change in leg position, as you can see it from my feet and knee angles. But what you can definitely see is more definition through my abs, my waist, my quads, and chest. Even my face has come down some, which is usually one of the first things to change in people as they embark on a fat loss diet. Now, from the back, again, I'm holding my back a little bit differently, which gives the impression of a lot of size gains, which again, while I think I have progressed some, there really isn't that dramatic a muscle size difference as it may look. Yes, like the lighting and composition of both photos is exactly the same, but subtle changes in posing can make all the difference. But again, you can clearly see how much leaner I am through my mid-back, my lower lat and hip region, and even in my hamstrings and that, so I guess that side quad sweep region. Now, how much weight or body fat have I lost? I've absolutely no idea. 
As I mentioned in my first diet vlog, I don't have any measurements due to me being lazy and not getting a set of weighing scales, nor wanting to do any like caliper testing or girth measurements or DEXA scans. I really don't recommend you use this approach and instead recommend you take as much data as you can to track your progress as this will help guide decision making with your nutrition long term. But I've been doing this long enough to be able to be quite comfortable with making judgments based just on how I look in the mirror, in clothes, in progress photos and also how I feel overall. So one thing that I have been keeping an eye on that I recommend everybody do are some of the more qualitative measurements such as overall energy, mood and sleep. Sleep is something that you could get more quantitative, accurate data on by using different wearable devices. But again, I don't have one, I don't really want one, and I just go off based, uh, basing things on total hours spent in bed, whether or not my sleep was broken or not, and how I feel in the morning each day upon waking. This stuff is just as important as the usual metrics most people use, such as body weight and body fat. For example, if someone's body weight and body fat has decreased by any kind of measurement, you might say that the first few weeks of dieting was going really well and that they were in a really good place. However, if I also saw their energy, mood and sleep plummeting to a level that I deem to be excessive, I wouldn't be as confident in saying that. Because yes, they're leaner, but they could actually be setting themselves up for a lot of health issues in the very near future that could reverse all these results and that could easily be avoided. So what's been going on on that front for me and how's it going to decide, uh, guide my decision-making pro, um, process for the next uh, future now that I'm five weeks in? Overall, I seem to be in a pretty good position. The first few days, I of course felt a big slump in energy and my hunger skyrocketed. This is completely normal and I knew that it would subside within a few days. Now, this is something that doesn't necessarily have to happen, but it is more so because I cut my calorie intake pretty aggressively when I started. If I was working with someone and it was their first time dieting or I wasn't really sure how they'd handle big changes in hunger and energy, I'd go for a more milder approach from the start so they don't experience this kind of aggressive response. And this is where the finer details of how you set up a diet for an individual given their specific context is important to be considering. So since then, I've been consistently dropping body fat and performing well in the gym. I'm able to perform at a high level of intensity and with a lot of endurance through my workouts, which indicates to me that I have more than enough fuel. And each day I'm waking up leaner and noticing physical changes in the gym with new striations or vascularity and definition in my body overall. So things have been going pretty well for the most part. However, there is one thing that I have noticed a little bit more recently in the last probably two to three weeks my sleep has started to change. It's not necessarily suffering, as I do still have a good amount of energy, and I would say I sleep well through the entire night. However, what I am noticing is a general trend to have less sleep. Whilst I still give myself roughly nine hours of time in bed each night, I find myself organically waking up after maybe six hours, which is shaving off at least one, if not two, full sleep cycles for me. Now, there could be a lot of things going on here, but my best guess is that this is part of the stress response. You see, part of the process of you being able to drop body fat is your body has to set off a stress response, which involves a hormonal cascade of different molecules such as norepinephrine to enter into the bloodstream. This is used to pull fatty acids out of the fat cell to be used as energy, which then goes towards you losing fat overall. However, that's not all norepinephrine does. It also raises your alertness and focus short term, and it may even give you a slight mood boost. This correlates really well with how I've been feeling with my energy and performance and my overall mood being on the up. However, what it can also do is interfere with sleep. Remember, hormones like norepinephrine can be loosely categorized as stress hormones that get released to help initiate what's called the fight or flight response to help you prepare to deal with a potential threat. It makes sense that having elevated levels of this neurotransmitter in the bloodstream, it may help, it may interfere with my ability to get into a state of deep sleep and to be able to remain asleep for as long, to the point of even shaving off a couple of sleep cycles each night for me. Now, this might not be what's going on whatsoever, but it is worth keeping in mind. 
So what I plan on doing personally is doubling down a little bit more on my typical sleep rituals. I'm already probably like maybe 70, 80% compliant with things like avoiding eating a few hours before bed, avoiding screens or anything stimulatory to my brain in the evening, and doing less dopaminergic and more mindfulness-based tasks and activities as the sun goes down. But I can always look to improve this further and look to how I'm setting up the rest of my day as well. The next step after that may be to put in specific supplements such as magnesium and B vitamins as these are two basic nutrients that are often depleted in times of stress and they're relatively inexpensive and are extremely safe to be taking even if they weren't needed. I try to avoid the use of things like melatonin and 5-HTP, not because they're inherently dangerous, but because they more directly influence specific neurotransmitters and hormones instead of providing the raw materials or the essential cofactors that your body will put towards wherever it decides that it needs it the most. But I may very well end up putting them in as well because they are very useful sleep aids. Now, if that doesn't cause a significant improvement, the next step will be to look at more significant changes to pull myself out of as stressed a state, which is where refeeds and diet breaks come in handy. I've got a full video on refeeds and diet breaks and cheat meals, which I'll put into the description box, maybe even up here if I can do that. I don't know if YouTube lets you do two links in one video, but go there, you can learn a little bit more about those strategies and what the differences are and how I use them. But I'd be looking at doing a three-day refeed initially, increasing my calories by about 40%, all coming from carbohydrates. That should be enough to bring in some improvements in my sleep if it is related to the extra stress of being in a calorie deficit. And then I'll go straight back down overnight to my regular calorie intake where I'm currently at. Now, if there was no noticeable improvement, then I might look to do a longer two-week diet break, but I highly doubt I'll need to go to that extent so early on into this current dieting phase. Now, an important consideration to make with dieting that I don't think is given enough emphasis is that while fat loss is that while fat loss in this whole process is generally seen as like a healthy endeavor, it really depends on the context. Dropping from say 30% body fat down to 20% body fat is typically going to give some positive health benefits from decreasing inflammation. From 20 to 15% is probably going to be kind of similar-ish. But as we go from say 15 to 10, or 10 to single digits, this is where the strain on your body starts to increase considerably, whilst the health benefits start to plateau. So is dieting and fat loss really healthy? Of course the answer is it depends. And not just on how you go about doing it, but from what level and to what point. This is an important thing to keep in mind with setting up the right expectations with this whole fat loss process. So if my sleep doesn't improve a lot, or if it's something that does improve and then after a few weeks starts to degrade again, it may well be something that I just have to suck up and deal with. I mean, yes, it's not ideal or necessarily healthy long term, but that's not why I'm in this dieting phase in the first place. And that is why it is so important to be making sure that you meet a baseline of health as a prerequisite before even considering a diet or fat loss phase if you're looking at getting down to these sorts of extreme levels of low body fat like I currently am. If I was going from say 30 to 20% as a male, it'd be a slightly different story. And I think the process of dieting can be used to help create a lot of healthy habits and lifestyle behaviors. But by the time you're in the mid to low teens or even lower as a male and probably the mid teens to 20% as a female, you should already have those lifestyle habits deeply ingrained and be in a solid state of health. So apart from potentially incorporating this refeed and diet break, what will be my other changes to my nutrition and training in the next few weeks? So far, absolutely nothing at all. There's a lot to be said about simply staying the course and not making any adjustments to a nutrition or training plan, especially if it's working. I think in this day and age with the constant barrage of information and also a lot of the dopaminergic tendencies to do with like our personalities, we tend to expect to change things up very often. I remember when I used to work a lot with clients, they'd expect to change every single week, sometimes even more frequently than that when nine times out of 10, the best course of action is to simply stay the course. 
Because if you've set things up properly with your training and your nutrition and your lifestyle, there should be a compounding effect of what you're doing over time. Where each week, your body doesn't just continue to progress, but you actually start to make more progress. Especially with training, as your body starts to make more adaptations to the stimulus you placed upon your body from week one. So as long as I'm continuing to notice improvements and things aren't being stagnant or going backwards for more than maybe two weeks, I'm happy to stay the course as is. There have even been times with myself and clients where I've gone through like an entire 12 to 16 week fat loss or muscle building phase with absolutely no changes to anything with training or nutrition. Now it doesn't always play out like this, but if the plan is sufficient and adherence is high, there's often no reason to change anything whatsoever. I really can't stress the importance of that enough. Stay the course and stop looking to change things up so frequently. It often takes more than a week to realize any effects of changes to nutrition or a training plan. And if you've already gone ahead and made another change on top of that, you'll have a very hard time knowing what actually worked and whether, um, whether or not it's beneficial or not. It really mixes up all of your data, which leads to very bad decision making. And there's probably a big reason why people wind up heavily malnourished in their nutrition plans and doing way too much cardio and training in a really suboptimal fashion. So there you go, guys. I hope you enjoyed this video, this little recap, this vlog, and that's given you some useful insight into how the past few weeks have been going for me and that you can take this away into your own future fat loss phases. If you have any questions at all, feel free to drop them below and I'll see you guys next time.